Okay, let's move on to question number three. Okay, so in this question we're asked kind of a very large, we can see that it's like a very large paragraph, so we'll just read it all. The mean radius of the Earth is 3,959 miles. However, Earth is not quite sphere. So right away we know we're given this number, so we should just keep that in the back of our heads. We might use that to do a calculation later. The planet's west to east rotation, so uh, it's telling us it's not a sphere. Uh, so the west to east rotation causes it to bulge at the equator. So if we think of the Earth, so I'll mark this as question number three. So the Earth, I'm going to try to, okay, so this, it's not a perfect circle. Let's say this was the equator. So the radius this way, or the diameter, I believe. So the planet's west to east rotation causes it to bulge out at the equator. Earth's equatorial diameter is 12756, 12,756 kilometers. But from pole to pole, the diameter is 12,714. So we're saying it's 12,756 kilometers in the west to east, so in the equator diameter. And then the diameter pole to pole is 12,714. If flying east to west, just above the Earth's surface at 150 miles per hour, calculate time to circle the equator. So we're given also this diameter, because it's not quite a sphere, and that's 12, 7, um, 1, 4. So 12,714 kilometers. So really they want us to focus on west to east, east to west. So they want us to focus on this number over here. So I'll highlight that number so we can remember to use that. So we're using, most likely going to be using this question number. And they also give us 150 miles per hour as speed. So I'll write that down to the side. 150 miles per hour. So right away we can see that this is in different units. So we have kilometers and miles per hour. And then here the mean radius. So it gives us this radius as well. I'm not, it's not really, I don't think this is really relevant to the question. It's more, we're talking about using the diameter around the center. So the equator. So this number. So here, one thing to notice about this physics problem is they give you a bunch of numbers, but you have to kind of figure out which numbers you need and which ones you don't. So right away we can cancel out. We don't really need this number. Usually a good way to start off is just write out all your givens and then put a star beside the numbers that you, you will use or or just put like an X beside the ones that you don't use. Um, and this will help you keep track of information. So we know this number is not really useful as well. We all don't really care about this. No, not this number actually, this number. Yeah, this is the number. We don't care about this number, pole to pole, we care about this number. That's what we're going to use in our calculations. So let's go through the junior tutor's answer before we complete the calculation. So the diameter of the Earth uh, at the equatorial, equatorial uh, line is given as this, so this one, or this. So they do the conversion, uh, they don't really show the diameter of the Earth from pole to pole and they do the conversion. So one thing to note quickly, so when you're converting kilometers to miles, so we know that the conversion rate is one kilometer. This is all messy. So one kilometer is equal to 0 0.62 miles. So this is um, the conversion rate. So looking at this, we know we have to, to convert it into miles. We would multiply by uh, 0 0.62 miles per kilometer. So we, we want the uh, rate that puts the miles in the numerator and the kilometers in the denominator. And we know this uh, will cancel out with this because kilometers is in the denominator. And we can see that these two cancel out this and this cancels out and we are left with miles so really all we have to do is take this number multiply by 0.62 let's plug that into our calculator 12756 
9.62 and we end up with 79.08 So here they have 79.26, so it's pretty close. Let's just double check that we didn't do anything wrong. 12.7.26. Yeah, so it's close enough. Um, it's in the ballpark, so it's maybe like 20 units off. That's, that's all right, though. So now the circumference of the Earth at the equator is given as this. So this is the equation for circumference, 2 pi r or pi times diameter, um, because two times the radius is just the diameter, so circumference is, I usually use C, but we can use S for circumference. So S is equal to pi diameter, which equals, in our situation, so pi times 7926. So this will give us the distance our plane is traveling. So we're saying we're flying over the Earth's surface from east to west rotation, so over the equator kind of. Um, so and we want to figure out the distance we're traveling. We know the diameter, we want the circumference around the Earth. So to do this, we do pi times 12756. Actually, no, we would not. We would, we would use the miles. So not the kilometers, because we want the answer in miles, so we can use this later on. So let's say times 7908. And this gives us, so I'll erase this for now, pi times 7908. 24844. This is miles, so I'll just put M. Actually, I'll write the full thing. Miles. Okay. So they get approximately the same. It's a little bit off, but it's about ballpark 24,000 miles. Um, and then, finally, uh, note that we want the, the 150 miles per hour. I'll erase this here. So we have this value here. Let me highlight that. So we have this. We're going to use this. And we're going to multiply it or divide. So here we're going to divide. So we're going to take this. The equation that we're using is speed is distance over time. We want to find out the time. So time is distance over speed. So to manipulate this equation, we just switch t and v. We switch the positions. Um, just by using algebra, you can kind of see how that works and then we have distance, so this value divided by velocity, which is this value right here. So we'll do that. So I'm not going to write out the numbers. I'm just going to do it in my calculator. 24844 divided by 150. And we can see that since we have the units, we'll have miles for the distance and then miles per hour. So the miles cancel out and then the hour goes to the numerator and we're left with the units hour, 166 hours. And that's our final answer. So looking at time, they calculate, so they do the same thing here, they end up with 166 hours. So that's kind of the step-by-step -step process to answering this question. Once again, just to summarize, um, They've given us some extra values uh, that we need to kind of figure out what we actually need based on what the question is asking. So it's good to write out these values, but then look at the question and figure out which values you really need. And we end up with one that 166 hours. So correct answer. Great job. Mark this as correct and move on to the next question.